Welcome back to the Connecticut Soccer Stadium. The starting lineups for today's game. First, for the visiting Syracuse Orange men, at the forwards, number 17, Mark DeMonte. Number 9, Sean Lilly. Number 22, Andreas Montvilla. At the midfields, number 24, Raymond Bruce. Number 4, Charles Mullen. And number 8, Scott Oceani. The backfield has number 3, Mark Fish. Number 18, Fred Paulson. Number 20, Steve Schaefer. And number 12, Jeff Silver. In goal for the Orange men, number one, Chris Whitcomb. And for the homestanding Yukon Huskies, the forwards, number seven, Dan Donegan. Number 10, Mike Tunson. And number 11, Kevin O'Hara. At the midfield, number six, Steve Rammel. Number eight, Wayne Churick. Number 13, Diego Borja. And number 15, Fred Carlos, as Joe Maroney juggles just a bit, going only with three backfielders. Number two, Todd D'Alessandro. Number four, Kerry Rudick. And number five, Chris Reef. In goal for UConn, number one, Tom Foley. The officials for this afternoon's game, the referee, the veteran from Framingham, Massachusetts, John Buckley, a veteran crew all the way around, the linesman today, Fernando Goulart of Somerset, Massachusetts, and Don Beerworth of Vernon, Connecticut, right down the road from stores. We're just about set for the start of soccer action. UConn, 4-2-1 and one on the season. The two losses to two of the top ten teams in the nation, both by one goal, losing to first Fresno State, then San Francisco. We're underway. Wayne Churick back to Diego Borja. And action begins as he looks for Mike Tunson down the far sideline. Tunson being closely marked by Silver. Tunson takes the ball away, looking for an opening, and he'll take it for the throw-in. This is Dan Donegan back to Tunson. Tunson looking for somebody up in the area. He's got Rammel. Rammel gets a head on it, but it's blocked away. And it goes out over the end line. Scott Oceani knocking it away. They say it went off of Rammel, so it'll be a goal kick. Chris Whitcomb of Cape Elizabeth May, the keeper. Well, Scott, I think the Huskies have juggled their lineup even more. I think they've moved Rammel up front and moved Borja back to the midfield. It does look like Rammel is playing in deep, so that appears to be the adjustment. Borja is actually replacing in the starting lineup Kanto Lulai, who's sitting out because of a red card received in the last game. Lulai a forward. Here comes Syracuse on the break, looking for Lilly in front, and it goes out over the end line. There's Sean Lilly, number nine for Syracuse. Or that is uh, not Sean Lilly. That's Charles Mullen. Charles Mullen, one of the midfielders. It's a very big game for Mullen. He's from Guilford, Connecticut. I'm sure he'd love to beat the Yukon Huskies. Probably a lot of family members here. Well, they have a couple of players from uh, Connecticut in the starting lineup. Andreas Montvilla, one of the forwards from Brookfield, Connecticut. As I was saying, Borja actually is replacing a forward, Kanto Lulai, in the starting lineup. But as Gary pointed out, it looks like they've moved Steve Rammel up from midfield to the front line and inserted Borja in at the midfield position. The Huskies trying to set up something coming back. That's Borja now. Wayne Churick. And Syracuse really has an opportunity to mark a lot closer than we saw them against Boston College the other night in the rain. This is Dan Donegan working his way around the corner and Schaefer. It's out off of Schaefer, a throw in for UConn. Churick to Donegan. Donegan being marked by Schaefer, and he kicks it out, and it'll be a goal kick for Syracuse. The Syracuse backs are not giving the UConn forwards any space at all. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for the UConn forwards today. UConn coach Joe Maroney, you can see on the clock over his shoulder that we're just underway here. Action at the Connecticut Soccer Stadium. And, of course, we are scoreless just getting underway. The last time these two teams met was in the Big East tournament in the semifinals a year ago. And they played on a very wet track here in stores. We talked to Syracuse coach that is taken down is Chris Reef. He's taken down by Sean Lilly. It'll be a kick for UConn. We talked to uh, Syracuse coach Tim Hankinson before the game, and he said he was absolutely amazed that this field is in such great shape. He thought they tore it up irreparably in last year's tournament. Borja on the far side, kicking it down the line, looking for Steve Rammel, unable to catch up with him. Rammel now, that's a handball, and it'll come back the other way. 
Also, uh, Gary, we, we were talking to Tim Hankinson, and he made a couple of points that we made at the uh, close of the broadcast. There's Tim Hankinson on the bench in the middle of your screen, wearing the tie. We talked to him before the game, and he made a couple of points that we made late in the broadcast at Boston College. Number one, that being so wet, the uniforms were heavy, the shoes were heavy, and it took a lot out of his players uh, against Boston College, plus the fact that uh, because this is an afternoon game and that was a night game, they would not get a full 48 hours of rest, so he felt this would be a very difficult game for his players. Especially with the fitness of the UConn Huskies, their, their constant substitution, plus the fact that Coach Eric Swallow gets them in great fitness. Really made us feel rather astute that he would hit us with a couple of points that we had made on the broadcast the other night. This is Chris Reef now for UConn. Looking ahead for someone, Borja in front of him calling the signals, downfield looking for Rammel. And it comes back to Donegan now, off ahead. Donegan putting it in front to Rammel. He is onside, Rammel just outside the area with O'Hara breaking in, but Rammel held outside very nicely by Silver. Rammel again picks it up, looking in front for O'Hara, he overshoots him. This is Oceani now, bringing it back for Syracuse. Rudick trying to pick it up, a handball will be called, however. Sean Lilly trying to knock it down and control it with a handball. Free kick for UConn. That's Sean Lilly, number nine. Lilly, a forward. He's out of Carlisle, Pennsylvania, just a sophomore. Dan Donegan on the far side. And again, he's unable to shape really marking him, keeping him from getting it into the area, and Schaefer kicks it out of bounds. Boy, this is, uh, this is unbelievable, Gary. We can see the faces, we can see the numbers, we pretty much know what's going on on the field today. And we are dry. And we are dry, so far. Bite your tongue. In the area, nobody home for UConn as they were looking for O'Hara, back to Rammel. Rammel tries to clear it to Churik, it's taken away, and now Borja gets it in. This is Churik, he shoots it high, and a little bit wide. So far, both teams have had their opportunities in putting some pressure on. Thank you, goal kick. UConn actually has spent more time in the opposing area so far, though. So far, UConn has dominated territorially, but the Syracuse backs are playing well so far, Scott. Especially Schaefer on Donegan, he's doing a good job so far. Best we've seen this far in this early in the season. Mike Tunson heading the ball, but he's called for dangerous play, and we'll get a kick for Syracuse. Tunson uh, back in the lineup. He's had a rough start this season. He started in the starting lineup. Now he's out, uh, out of the starting lineup, but because of the adjustments that Joe Maroney had to make for today's game, Mike Tunson is back in. We should mention that another adjustment will come with the absence of Brian Parker, who was injured in the game against Boston University. A long kick in front. Foley unable to get to it with a lot of bodies in front of him, but goes out off of Syracuse. Syracuse calling for a corner, but they will give it to uh, Foley for the goal kick. That was lack of communication there by the Huskies. Foley came off his line to get the ball, ran right into Chris Reef. Didn't yell keeper. Reef went up for the header. Foley knocked him over. Almost big mistake by the Husky defense. And that's Reef on your screen as he pushes it out, and it comes back to Foley. Alessandro feeding Foley, who now will look to clear it to one of his backs. And he leaves it for Kerry Rudick. UConn playing with three backs today out of their typical 4-4-3 formation and a 3-4-3, or their 4-3-3 formation to a 3-4-3. Diego Borja down for Rammel. Rammel being closely marked. Silver on him. Rammel throws it in for O'Hara. Coming out to pick up O'Hara, that's Mark Fish. And Silver kicks it off of Tunson. It'll be Syracuse with the throw in. Syracuse throw in. And the throw in goes out of bounds and it will come back the other way, says linesman Don Beerworth. You can see that it is chilly, but it has not kept the fans away. There's a good crowd on hand and they're continuing to come in. Out of bounds, Syracuse. Throw in for Steve Rammel of the Huskies. Into Dan Donegan. Donegan, give and go back to Rammel. Rammel tries to put it in front, cleared away by Fish. Well, 
play on at midfield. Delisandro for UConn, picked up by Borja, feeds it back to Kerry Rudick. Rudick ahead to Borja. Near side, he tries to get it in front. There's Ramel, it goes right by him, but Rudick. Well, that was O'Hara breaking in and almost got there ahead of Chris Whitcomb. It's a nice driven ball into the box by Diego Borja. Good pressure by the Huskies, but goalie Chris Whitcomb came off his line very nicely there to make the good save. In a situation like that, do you think that maybe Ramel knew he had Rudick breaking and uh, really didn't miss the ball but just let it go? That's a good point, Scott. What we call a dummy. That's what we call a dummy. Someone on the Yukon, one of the Yukon forwards could yell dummy. That means Ramel has to let the ball go. And in came the streaking O'Hara, just missed scoring. Again, the importance of communication is pointed out. Ramel tries to get it back to Donegan. He does, but Schaefer clears it away. Oceani with it down the sideline, out of bounds, a throw in for Yukon. This is Fernando Carlos to Chris Reeve. Reef being very closely marked there. Ray Bruce brings it back. Play on as Bruce is held, but he controls the ball. Kerry Rudick takes it away from him, and it goes out of bounds over the end line, and a corner kick being signaled by referee John Buckley. So Oceani will go to the corner for the kick. This will be our first corner kick of the game. We saw Oceani handle the chores the other night, and they opted pretty much in the rain to go with a short kick. Do you think they might try to put it up in front today, Gary? I think they will. Oceani drives the ball very well into the box. He can put it, he's very similar to Dan Donegan in that respect. He can put the ball wherever he wants. Should be dangerous for the UConn defense here. Looking up in front, DeMonte was breaking in, but they aren't able to get it there. A shot on goal right on Foley, who manages to clear it away. Syracuse, Oceani now with the pressure, shoots it wide of the goal. Back outside come the Orange men, looking to get it into the area. A very scary opportunity for Syracuse that time. A good shot on goal to Foley, who was unable to completely control it and just swiped it away from the goal mouth with his hand. And again, the Orange men try to come in. Chris Reeve clears the ball away as he takes it away from Jeff Silver. And it'll come back on a free kick for Connecticut, so they're able to get it away from their area. But Tom's Foley severely tested a couple of times in that last flurry. Wayne Churick heads it ahead to Kevin O'Hara. Back to Churick. Churick heads it ahead. O'Hara's not there. Silver brings it back for, uh, for Syracuse. But Dan Donegan moves it ahead and play on at midfield. Boy, what an opportunity Syracuse just set up off of that corner kick, Gary. They really got themselves something going with uh, Oceani putting it up in front as Foley clears it away again for UConn. It was a nice ball by Oceani. Syracuse set up to play very well. Nice hit, nice shot. Well, we can take He's another look at it. Here's the ball by Oceani. UConn defender Rudick fails to clear the ball. I believe that's Paulson. It's a nice first time shot, half volley at Foley, which Foley should have held on to but didn't, but managed to slap it away in the UConn defense. Reef managed to get it out of serious trouble. Well, that was out of serious trouble for the moment, but Syracuse did come back with more pressure before the UConn defense was able to get it away. Now his play resumes with Rammel on the far side. Gets it back to D'Alessandro and back to Borja. Now the Huskies will try to apply some pressure of their own as they try to set up at midfield. This is Chris Reeve over to Carlos. Carlos closely marked by Lilly. Lilly almost comes away with it, and now Carlos is taken down from behind. Andreas Montvilla, as we have subs waiting to come in for Joe Maroney, warming up on the sideline. John Buckley gives the ball to Syracuse to put back into play. Mark Fish will trigger it on the kick. Fish looking ahead for Silver, but Tunson gets the ball and clears it to Carlos. Tunson is taken down from behind by Silver. Free kick, UConn. And here comes Oceani for Syracuse. Out to Lilly. Picked up by Carlos and taken away, and Carlos is held from behind. I, we might have a card here on Carlos. 
as he came back with an elbow on Lilly. It appears it'll just be a warning. Carlos explaining himself to referee John Buckley. We can see in the early going, Scott, that there is no love loss between these two teams. They're yes. going at it very aggressively. As we mentioned in the pregame show, Gary, I think you can uh, really realistically put the word revenge, at least from UConn's side of the uh, field, into the description of this game as Steve Rammel comes down looking for either Donegan or O'Hara and getting in the way is Steve Schaefer. This is D'Alessandro now being very closely marked by Andreas Monfila. And Connecticut will get the free kick. D'Alessandro back to Reef, so they'll set it up from behind. He's being marked by Montvilla. Donegan with a back footer looking for Diego Borja, but it's taken away by Charles Mullen. That's Mark DeMonte getting it across field, picked up by Carlos, almost taken down from behind. He maintains control, runs at Oceani, who clears it back, but D'Alessandro picks it up, up ahead to Donegan. Donegan trying to get around Schaefer. Schaefer staying right with him. Schaefer has played Donegan extremely well in the early going. We have 30 minutes left in the first half. We're scoreless at the Connecticut Soccer Stadium. Throw in by Donegan to O'Hara, and O'Hara loses it over the end line. Well, as you're saying, Scott, Schaefer's playing very aggressively on Donegan. I believe Tim Hankinson has assigned Schaefer to Donegan. That's his job for today, to shadow Donegan, not let him produce a goal or an assist. And if he keeps Dan Donegan off the board, he'll really be doing something that uh, a lot of people have had trouble with. You know, Dan Donegan is averaging a goal on every 3.5 shots this season. He's already got four goals and six assists. 10 points in seven games as the Huskies are four, two, and one in the early going. And a long shot in on goal, and that ball just tailed right down. That was Ray Bruce taking the shot. It went up high, but tailed in the wind, and Foley made the save. Donegan with a back foot looking for anybody, but nobody home, and a back foot for Syracuse. Charles Mullen loses it out of bounds, so it'll be a throw in for UConn and Diego Borja. Up ahead as we have the substitutes in the game now, that's Brian Anderson for UConn. Anderson is in the Husky lineup now, also in freshman Ian Gruno. This is Anderson going down the far sideline, trying to get the ball worked in, Gruno in the area, but the Orange men will come back with it. And it goes out off of, uh, well they say it went off of Anderson, so it'll be Syracuse ball. Also in the UConn lineup now in the backfield, number three, Bill Lawrence. Rammel with a takedown, but Syracuse maintains possession, play on. This is Chris Reeve trying to get it ahead. He's taken down, and now we get the call on the obstruction. Kick for UConn. This is Silver, ahead to Oceani. Long feed up into the UConn area. Reeve clears it to Foley. Foley with a long clear out, but Oceani gets in the way of Gruno. Oceani picking up the ball and heading it, or kicking it in. It went off of Rudick's head. Reef picked it up off his chest and comes back the other way. It's bad distribution there by Foley Scott. He threw it to Gruno head. Oceani right in his back, and Oceani an anticipated the throw, came in and stripped, him, stripped Gruno of the ball. Well, it looked like UConn was going to get the throw in, but John Buckley says, no, it comes the other way. Syracuse on the throw in. Long throw in looking for Lilly, picked up by Reef. This is Steve Rammel back in the backfield for UConn. Through the legs of Gruno by Oceani, but picked up by Rammel. Wayne Churick loses the ball, but it goes back to Reef. Reef dribbling upfield now, looking for someone. He finds Borja back to Reef at midfield. Reef goes wide and, heads and kicks it ahead to Anderson. Ahead to Borja, taken down from behind by Charles Mullen. 
and it'll be a kick. The ball went out, but the takedown was inbounds. Borjao will get the free kick. UConn will look for some cutters up front. They have Donegan in the area. They have Ian Bruno in the area. Shurik in the area now looking for Donegan, and the ball curves right in on, on the keeper, Chris Whitcomb. Well, what we've seen so, so far, Scott, the Syracuse defenders are slide tackling too much, in my opinion. It could cost them if they miss the ball. They're following a lot off the slide tackle. It could cost them with possibly a penalty kick or a direct kick right outside the box later in the game. We do have a very light drizzle falling now here in stores, and the conditions on the field could gradually change as the game goes on. Down in the corner, that's Chris Reef for UConn. Reef dribbling out. Reef still maintaining control. He's gone through about four orange men. Borja to Anderson, looking ahead to Donegan. Donegan running down the far side. And of course, Steve Schaefer right with him as always, but Donegan gets around him and coming out to help out was Mark Fish. So UConn unable to get anything out of that particular rush, and the Orange men come back ahead to DeMonte. DeMonte coming ahead, but nobody home. He was looking for Montvila. D'Alessandro to Gruno. And now it's the Huskies to Wayne Churich. The freshman Gruno loses the ball to Oceani, but Rammel picks it up. Rammel tries to turn the corner. Mark Fish comes back and does a good job of keeping him outside. They tie, Fish ties up Rammel, and the Orangemen will come back to Oceani. Ahead to Montvila. He's taken down from behind, but DeMonte maintains possession. This is Sean Lilly. Montvila looking for DeMonte, breaking into the area, headed away by D'Alessandro. Borja takes possession. He'll look ahead. He's got Donegan in front of him and gives him the ball. Donegan now looking for Churik. Churik taken down. Another sliding tackle attempted. That was Raymond Bruce taking Churik down. That could be a real dangerous situation. Rammel breaking into the area. He's open. Chris Whitcomb comes out and gets a foot on the ball. Fish is pointing to the line saying, where's the offside call? But that looked like a good play by Rammel. And we'll see if we can really pick it up. It Todd like D'Alessandro just played the ball to Rammel. No way was he offsides. Comes in, goalie Chris Whitcomb comes out, cuts down the angle, makes a great save on Rammel. If Rammel had gotten that ball up about another six inches, that was a goal for UConn. But we're still scoreless with 24 minutes to play in the first half. Steve Schaefer with the ball. Back to his keeper. This is Mark Fish. And the tempo slows down just a little bit. We have seen an awful lot of hard charging action so far, Gary. A lot, a lot of very physical plays, got a lot of hard falls, a lot of slide tackles, which are very dangerous. You know, defenders can hurt the forwards very easily with a slide tackle, and we're seeing too much of that, in my opinion. Well, the last slide tackle we saw was made by Syracuse on Wayne Churik. <coughs> Excuse me, and just before that rush, I was going to point out that that is a pretty scary situation for Joe Maroney because Churik is playing on an ankle that doesn't bother him until he actually takes contact in that ankle. And we saw it knock him out of the BU game for a while the other night. This ball will go out of bounds and it'll be a throw in for UConn, Rudick to Reef. Reef out to Borja. Borja to Anderson, Anderson loses it. This is DeMonte feeding it back now. This is Fish. Fish ahead to Mullen, Mullen out to Silver. Silver down the line, it'll stay in. Lawrence trying to catch up with him, but Lilly beats him to it. Lilly around the corner, and we will have a push called, or an obstruction called on Lawrence, but outside the area, says John Buckley. Well, Lily there thought the referee should have called play on. He felt he had it, he still had the advantage. He wanted to keep going on goal, but Buckley whistled Lawrence for the foul. Well, it did look like uh, Lawrence had been beaten around the corner, and Lily did have con uh, control of that play and the advantage of that play, but the whistle was blown. Dangerous situation now. Syracuse gets something going in front, and Donegan clears a shot away in the corner. Borja now going outside, trying to keep it in. He doesn't do it. 
Here we see Lilly with the ball, goes around Lawrence. Lawrence is holding him, but if the referee didn't blow the whistle, we would have seen Lilly keep going on goal. It did look like Lilly had the advantage. Now this is Borja again for UConn. Ahead looking for Anderson, it goes out of bounds. And you can see that maybe that last sliding tackle on Wayne Churick did take its toll. He's having trouble with that left ankle. But he obviously feels he can continue. If he didn't, the best thing for him to do would be to just lay down on the field and force a substitution. Well, Churick's a gamer. It's his senior year. He doesn't want to miss a big game like the Syracuse game. He really wants the revenge. I think the revenge factor is important for Churick in the situation. Doesn't feel the pain as much as he might. Well, you know, we saw Kanto Lulai before the game, and you could tell that it was kind of eating away at him that he's got to miss this game. Up in Boston on Friday night, the Syracuse players sort of smiled that Lulai wouldn't be in the lineup. I think some of the backs were a little pleased at that. Here comes Chris Reef, and he's coming in a long way for the Huskies. Reef still dribbling, tries to get it in the area off the back of Rammel. It rebounds out. And here come the Orange Men. This is Sean Lilly. Taken away now by Churik, looking for Gruno, but it's brought back by Oceani to Lilly. Back to Oceani. He'll kick it out of bounds. Reef's looking very dangerous on his runs forward. Uh, the Syracuse forwards are doing a weak job at marking him. Uh, he's creating havoc for the Syracuse backs because the forwards are not chasing Reef, who is a sweeper back. Well, you know, not being from New England, they haven't had the advantage of uh, scouting some of these games on Nesson, in which they would see that Reef has that ability and that tendency to bring the ball in deep. Well, Reef is an all-New England player. The coaches should know of his ability. He was named the Met Classic MVP out at that tough California trip for the Huskies. Bruno slips down trying to get to the ball from Rammel, and now he's tied up from behind by Oceani. And they say that it was Gruno who initiated that action. There he is, freshman Ian Gruno. For Joe Maroney, he has really turned in some outstanding performances this season. This will be Mark Fish triggering the action now for Syracuse. Long kick back to Reef. Controls it with his chest and now works it around in the area. Back to Foley. Clear out to Bill Lawrence. Oh, look at Joe Maroney as Donegan is taken down, and Maroney. I think Maroney feels Schaefer should be given a yellow card for that dangerous sliding tackle on Donegan. That's just what I'm talking about there, Scott. Very dangerous play. Dan Donegan could have very easily been injured on that. You know, that's one player that uh, Joe Maroney doesn't want to play any part of this season without, and you can see his reaction. To well, that play. It's okay to slide tackle, but a lot of the players are slide tackling with their cleats up, which is a yellow card infraction. I think uh, referee Buckley is going to have to give a yellow card soon so the players won't keep doing this the rest of the game. Well, if it continues, really, to take control, you're right. He'll have to come out with a card very shortly. Fish brings the ball back to the position pointed out to him by the linesman. That's where he'll take the kick. We have a couple of uh, Syracuse substitutes waiting to come into the lineup or come into the, onto the field. Number 13 there on your screen is a freshman forward, William Younger. Wasn't able to catch the number of the other player, but we'll get him as they come in. Younger's a freshman from Dundee, Scotland. We saw a lot of Younger in the game the other night at Boston College. Very talented, aggressive player. He really was uh, very impressive, especially under those conditions. Number 17 on your screen, a big scorer for Syracuse, Mark DeMonte. He was their leading scorer a year ago. This is Scott Oceani looking for a set up in front. I think he's going to get one. DeMonte breaking in now and on goal and taken down by Foley. He had people in the area but brought it out, and the man who actually took the shot was Charles Mullen, the midfielder from outside the area. He got it right on goal, and Foley pulled it down. So a little eye contact here between Oceani and Mullen. They both played at Guilford High School in Connecticut, so they must have had something up there. Oh, and taken down by Silver is Steve Rammel. Play, play it, play it. Rammel was looking for a card, I think, but Bu John Buckley says, play it, play it. Here's Gruno on the outside of the area, and he just kicks the ball away. 
Bruno looks down at the ground. That was not the foot he wanted to get on it. Substitutes coming in now. Younger in the lineup for Syracuse. Kevin O'Hara back in for UConn. Kerry Rudick goes out. Diego Borja goes out. Steve Rammel goes out. Mike Tunson back in. Also into the, uh, well, let me just uh, check some of the stats. Shots on goal right now for UConn. Four for Syracuse, five. Fouls for UConn, seven for Syracuse, 12. Fred Carlos also back in the lineup for the University of Connecticut Huskies. The other newcomer in the lineup for Syracuse, number 14, Dave Crouch, another player we saw a lot of against Boston College. That was back to Silver and out off of Anderson, or off of Silver, Anderson will throw it in. It's a Churik, slide away by Crouch. And here come the Orange men again. This is Oceani, looking for anybody in front, but he finds four Husky jerseys, but playing it very lazily, Mike Tunson, he's almost, he is taken off the ball. Crouch almost got in on Tunson on that one. Oh, he almost had a shot on goal and a nice block by Diego Borja. Or excuse me, that was a nice block. Give credit where credit is due by Fred Carlos. On the shot that time was Raymond Bruce. Here comes Mullen back for the Orange men. Mullen has Younger in front. He gives it to Fish going for Younger. Younger tries to get a foot on the ball, but he boots it wide. I think if Younger had gotten a foot on the ball, he might have beaten Tom Foley on that play. Younger in great position in the corner of the net. Here's the play where Carlos got the nice sliding block. I believe if Carlos didn't block that, it could have been well than a goal for the Syracuse Orangemen. Boy, that was headed for the goal. A nice shot by Raymond Bruce, and you could see the way it came off of Carlos, exactly how hard that shot was. Clear out to Tunson. And Tunson is taken off the ball by David Crouch. Crouch really anticipating Tunson very well the last couple of times. Tunson just not hustling on the last couple of plays in the corner of the area. Here's Chris Reef to Carlos. Ahead for Donegan, but it goes out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Carlos. Headed back, Syracuse trying to come the other way. Here's Tunson with the ball now. Tunson trying to get it ahead to Donegan. Crouch coming back for Syracuse. Crouch trying to get around Lawrence, but Lawrence gets it back to Reef. And Reef comes out again. Now they're starting to pick up Reef a little bit sooner in the backfield. Here's Reef. Out to Gruno. Gruno taken down on a sliding tackle. Wayne Churick being held, and they'll call the hold on Churick and send it for Syracuse. Churick was holding, they say. Raymond Bruce, the holdee. And it'll be a free kick for Syracuse. Mark Fish will handle it. Syracuse really setting up a lot of activity in front of Fish. A lot of people playing well away from the ball. Fish goes right for the area, headed away by Reed. But a lot of orange men there. Donegan picks it up. Donegan kicks it too wide. He had O'Hara breaking, but no way O'Hara was going to get to that ball as it went out of bounds. This is Carlos keeping the orange from getting around the corner. It goes out off of him, and there will be a throw in from that position. Syracuse throw in. Well, we have microphones behind the goals today. We can, we can hear Tom Foley barking instru instructions to his Yukon Huskies from the goal. Number 20 is Steve Schaefer on the throw in for Syracuse. He gets it in front. This is DeMonte. DeMonte taken down. No call. And Connecticut continues to bring the ball back now. Here's Wayne Churick. Churick running well now to O'Hara. O'Hara onside. O'Hara trying to get into the area. Mark Fish, boy, did he lope back in fine fashion, but he loses the ball over the end line. A corner kick for UConn, but my hat's off to Mark Fish. It looked like O'Hara was going to be all alone to turn that corner, but Fish just loped out of nowhere and took the ball away, but he sets up a corner kick for Dan Donegan. Great timing there by Fish. He's a, he's a great sweeper back. He, he anticipated that O'Hara was going to hit the ball too far in front, came in and made a nice play. And O'Hara would appear to be the target man in front. O'Hara on the keeper. 
to keep the keeper busy. Tunson in the area as well as Borja. Here's the setup by Donegan. He goes in close for O'Hara. Borja, Tunson gets a head on the ball and it goes out over the end line. And we have a corner kick called the other way by referee John Buckley. Bill Lawrence receiving instructions from coach Joe Maroney. Also Ian Gruno there. And the corner kick comes in, headed away by Syracuse out of bounds. And we'll get a throw in for UConn, Wayne Shurick. We usually see Brian Parker in that situation with a long throw. But Parker is injured today, as you stated earlier, Scott. And it goes out of bounds and another corner kick for UConn. Now UConn really starting to put some pressure on. This will be the third corner kick in the last minute of play for Dan Donegan as our lineups and papers get blown away. The wind whipping up and it's a goal in front. Todd Delisandro, the setup from the corner by Dan Donegan. And Delisandro boots the ball in. UConn takes the lead, one to nothing. And you can see D'Alessandro being mobbed by his teammates. You will see the replay. It's a corner kick, which Syracuse failed to clear. UConn's been putting a lot of pressure on the Syracuse defense. Here comes D'Alessandro, just hits a left-footed in-step drive into the corner of the net. D'Alessandro just blasted it by. Syracuse had two, two defenders on the goal line, but they could do nothing as D'Alessandro just overpowered the two defenders and goalie Chris Whitcomb. Right, Chris Reef tried to get to that ball initially on the kick from Donegan. It went by him. A couple of defenders unable to clear the ball, and out of the from out of the area came Delisandro. Really set himself nicely. Got a good kick, and UConn takes the lead. 10:43 remaining in the first half. When the Huskies came up with that goal. I know why D'Alessandro's so happy now, Scott. That was his first career goal for the Huskies. First career goal for junior Todd D'Alessandro. The actual official time, 34-17. UConn taking the lead, one to nothing. So the Syracuse Orange men find themselves down, having to scramble to get back in because a loss today would really end all of their hopes for a uh, tournament berth in the Big East. Gary, we could very easily see one northern team and three southern teams in it in the Big East tournament this year. Seton Hall looks like a shoe in Mark Fish puts it up in the area. Tom Foley comes out and takes it. Seton Hall, as I say, looks like a shoe in St. John's playing very well with a win over Syracuse, and Georgetown appears to be playing well now. So a loss by Syracuse today could almost open it up for one northern team, UConn, or it would appear to be UConn if they win today. The only other northern team that might have any possibility at all would be Providence. But that's only because they don't have the uh, games against Big East competition yet. Dan Donegan taken down. We have a uh, free kick called by John Buckley, but that's the second time Dan Donegan has been taken down by a sliding tackle right in front of Joe Maroney. And again, Joe Maroney calling for the yellow card. Here's Donegan in front. Kicked off of him by Fish. Donegan will go up for the header. He misses it. Borja kicks it into the area in front of Ramble, and it goes wide. It's a corner kick deflected off the Syracuse defender. Right. That was deflected, I believe, off of Silver. And Donegan will get another corner kick. And the last time Donegan did this, Todd D'Alessandro scored the only goal of the game. We have eight and a half minutes left in the first half. UConn leading one to nothing. Again, O'Hara, the target man in front. If Donegan appear, if chooses to go that way, he does go up close. And getting out in front of O'Hara is Chris Whitcomb to haul it down. Whitcomb now barking out the signals to his backs. Here's Dan Donegan here. Nice driven ball into the box. Whitcomb comes out well. Struggles a bit with O'Hara, but makes a nice save. Syracuse free kick now as Raymond Bruce is taken down in the midfield area. Fish triggers it to Bruce. Bruce telling his players, get up in front and set up. This is Carlos with the ball. Tackled from behind. He sits down on a Syracuse defender, now clear into the area. Taken away by Tunson. Tunson trying to get it ahead, unable to do so. He goes for the sliding tackle, and the Orange men come back the other way. Looking in front for David Crouch. 
Cleared away by Carlos, it'll go out of bounds. That's a nice play there by Carlos. He felt that UConn was under a lot of pressure, just get the ball out of bounds so UConn could get back, get themselves together, get their composure back. One bad bounce in that place, and Crouch was open to turn it around and take the shot. And a dangerous play by Carlos. Hi, how you doing? Boy, that looks good, doesn't it? Really enjoying himself on a cool afternoon in stores. This is Mullen. Mullen setting up the free kick. And we'll see about four orange men cut into the area, but Reef will head it out. But Donegan, who takes it down with his foot, and a trip called on Donegan. In the lineup now for Coach Tim Hankinson, number six is sophomore Scott Pascarella, who was taken down by Donegan. And it'll be Bruce. Well, it will be Bruce who will handle the kick. This will be a dangerous situation in front of Tom Foley. Bruce going uh, to the far side of the area, really overkicks everything, and O'Hara will let it go, and the Huskies get the throw in to bring it back the other way. That was not a good effort by Bruce. Six minutes left to play in the first half. UConn won, Syracuse nothing, as Reef brings it back. That's Rammel off of Syracuse head. Rammel picks it up again, and he's marked off the ball. Another sliding tackle, this time by Crouch. No, that was Bruce on the tackle. Now we're getting some physical activity on the ground. Referee John Buckley is going to have to come in and break this one up. Joe Maroney uh, having a few words with Buckley, saying, I think you're losing control, John. Well, it's been a nicely played game so far, Scott. It's getting a bit chippy now. I think, I think uh, referee Buckley needs to show a yellow card so the play calms down a bit. This is Tunson trying to get to the ball, cleared away by Fish. Comes out to Pascarella with Donegan. Donegan head, kicks it ahead, looking for Borja. Borja picks it up. He's got room to put it into the area. Pascarella on him, out to Carlos. Carlos, marked by Fish, puts it ahead of O'Hara. And Chris Whitcomb with Dan Donegan breaking in on him, picks it up and clears it away. It's a nice ball there by Borja. The whole Syracuse defense expects, expected him to cross the ball, knocked it back to Carlos, who almost got a nice opportunity on goal. Yeah, because when he got it to Carlos, Carlos was open. Here's O'Hara on a feed from Carlos. O'Hara getting it outside to Tunson. Tunson open. He kicks it high. Tunson was wide open. He had the shot, and he kicked it high as Chris Whitcomb came out to try to cut down the angle. Four and a half minutes to play in the first half. UConn leading one to nothing. Mark Fish on the corner on the goal kick for Syracuse. That was a great ball by O'Hara. He saw Tunson streaking wide open. Tunson's first touch on the ball wasn't good. It took him away from the, from the goal. It took his own angle away from himself and hit a shot over the top of the net. Brian Malone in the lineup now for the University of Connecticut. Rich Bayman also in, a couple of sophomores. This copyrighted program is brought to you under pay cable TV rights granted by the University of Connecticut solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the accounts and descriptions of this game without the written consent of the New England Sports Network and the University of Connecticut is prohibited. Playback on at midfield. Syracuse trying to get the ball again into the area. Kerry Rudick heads it away. Going outside now for Oceani. Oceani gets it into the area, but it's cleared away by Borja out of bounds. Oceani with a throw in. Out to Silver, looking for Oceani again, but Kerry Rudick clears it away. Silver again, and he goes out to Fish. And a dangerous play. Oceani appears to be favoring his right ankle just a bit. That dangerous play led to a Syracuse player down. That's Pascarella holding the back of his head. But play will go on as Mark Fish will kick it into the area on the free kick. He's got Gruno and O'Hara in front of him. Let's see how he plays it. Goes up over O'Hara and over everything into the stands. It'll be a goal kick for Tom Foley. Not, not a bad attempt there by Fish, trying to test Tom Foley in the net. But you like to see, the, as I said in the Friday night telecast, you want to see those shots on goal to test the goalkeeper. You don't want to see him wide. You also have a lot of people in the box so you could get a rebound. Okay, it Foley plays with it a little bit as we're down to two and a half minutes in the first half. UConn with a one to nothing lead. On a really nice goal by Todd D'Alessandro. Off a corner kick. 
by Dan Donegan. So Donegan has registered his 11th point of the season, and Delisandro has registered his first ever UConn goal. Donegan with 11 points on four goals and seven assists this season. Tunson called for the handball, and Pascarella will handle the kick. No, they'll give it over to DeMonte now for Syracuse. John Buckley saying, not from there, move it back. So DeMonte back puts it to Mark Fish. Under two minutes in the first half. Fish ahead to DeMonte, but it bounces by him. Now he picks it up again. He's being marked by Tunson. Tunson takes him down. And again, Syracuse will get the free kick in a dangerous situation outside the Yukon area. This will be Mark Oceani on the free kick. That's Scott, Scott Oceani. Or excuse me, Scott Oceani. Mark Fish, Scott Oceani. Oceani puts it up, and again he shoots it high. He had the line, but he was too high over Tom Foley and over the goal. And Chris Reef will set up the goal kick now. And again, you can expect the Huskies to sort of take it slow as we creep down on the one minute mark in the first half. And Reef setting up outside to Lawrence, but no, he kicks it long. Looking for Carlos. One minute to play. Or excuse me, that's Brian Malone, number 16. Reef gets the free kick with 45 seconds to play in the first half. UConn leading one to nothing. Here's Reef going long on the kick, trying to find Malone, but it's taken down by Fish off a header. Pascarella clears it away, and it comes up right in front of us into the stands. Rudick with the throw in to Malone. Outside to O'Hara. O'Hara closely marked by Schaefer. Pascarella blocks it out of bounds. And Malone will handle a throw in with 15 seconds to play in the first half. This is Malone. In the corner and out of bounds. It'll be a goal kick. And we probably won't get this kick off. No, we won't. Time running out one. And that's the end of the first half with a score the University of Connecticut leading the Syracuse Orange men one to nothing. And right now, we'll remind you that on Sunday, September 27th, National Powerhouse UCLA comes to the Connecticut Soccer Stadium for a one o'clock match against the Huskies. For ticket information, call area code 203-486-2724. Our score at halftime, the University of Connecticut one and Syracuse nothing. And it has been a very well-played game. If a little bit chippy in the first half, Gary. It's a good point, Scott. It's been a little bit over aggressive by both teams. But it's been a nice, nice first half, the nice attacking soccer, which is something we haven't seen in a few broadcasts. We're seeing a lot more shots on goal today, which I personally like. And at halftime, our score, UConn won, Syracuse nothing. We'll be back to take a look at the first half stats and highlights in just a moment. Welcome back to the Connecticut Soccer Stadium at the University of Connecticut in stores. We're at halftime, and the University of Connecticut Huskies lead the Syracuse Orange men one to nothing. But it was a very closely played game and tightly played game in the first half, and the stats really aren't that far apart. It's a good point, Scott. Uh, the score, of course, UConn won, Syracuse nothing. Syracuse has 10 shots to UConn's eight. UConn goalie Tom Foley has three saves. Chris Whitcomb of Syracuse has three saves as well. Corner kicks, the Huskies have four. Syracuse has one, Falls, Syracuse 16, UConn 14. Kind of ironic, Gary, that the uh, biggest differential in stats was on the corner kicks because it was the corner kick, the last UConn corner kick that led to their one goal by Todd D'Alessandro. Uh, uh, Syracuse actually had the opportunity to take the, the lead in this game before UConn took the one to nothing lead and their one big setup came off of a corner kick as well. Corner kicks are very dangerous. Here's the cross, Scott Oceani hit the cross in. Up in the air, goes Cherik to try and cl to clear it. Here comes Paulson, hits a great half volley right on net, which Foley can't hold on to, but slaps away right before Mark Demonte could get in and Reef clear, cl clears the ball away. I think Foley could have held on to that shot. It was a very hard shot by Paulson, but I think Foley should have held on to that. Well, as we mentioned, uh, corner kicks can really be dangerous and set up a lot of things for you. And of course, uh, 
they have been really taking their toll in the first half here. The one that really hurt the most as far as Syracuse is concerned was a corner kick from the far sideline by Dan Donegan who handles these things for UConn. He did it well on the goal and Todd D'Alessandro was very advantageous. Here's the corner, gets by the reef. Syracuse has no one there to clear. In comes D'Alessandro who just rockets the ball right past the Syracuse defense. Syracuse had a defender on the far post, could do nothing about it. And here's D'Alessandro celebrating. Yeah, he's a defender, he doesn't score much. That was his first goal. So he's sort of like a defensive lineman when he scores a touchdown. D'Alessandro's gonna let everyone know he scored the goal. And really, what a nice uh, goal that was by D'Alessandro as the ball went by Reef to kick it with his left foot, and he just had himself so firmly planted on that right foot that he was able to get a lot of leverage on that shot, and boom, you're home. And that's the way it happened in the first half with the University of Connecticut taking a one to nothing lead on that goal, and at halftime, UConn still holding that one to nothing lead over Syracuse. And we'll be back with the second half kickoff right after these messages. Welcome back to the Connecticut Soccer Stadium at the University of Connecticut in stores. The, uh, to paraphrase Mark Twain, the coldest winter I ever spent was a summer afternoon in stores. It is really starting to get chilly. Just eyeballing the situation, it looks like the starting lineups for the second half are the same as the starting lineups for the first half, and we are underway. Mark DeMonte with the ball for Syracuse. It is summer here, isn't it, Scott? It still is summer, believe it or not feels a little bit like late autumn as the ball is cleared by Chris Reef back to keeper Tom Foley. Foley fakes the long throw out, long clearing pass and uh, lets things set up and kicks it out. Way ahead to Dan Donegan. Donegan gets a head on it, but it comes back to the orange. DeMonte loses it to Wayne Churick. Another sliding tackle. Fred Carlos chasing the ball. He's marked by Lilly out to Donegan. Donegan with his shadow, Steve Schaefer, and a throw in for UConn. And it looks like Donegan got hurt on that last sliding tackle by Schaefer. And John Buckley calls for a timeout. Let's see if Joe, Mar Joe Maroney's headed down the sideline. Let's see if he has anything to say. And he does, he's saying something to John Buckley. You see Donegan behind Maroney. Maroney looking for the substitute. Let's see if we can see what happened. Here's Schaefer marking Donegan very tightly, has been doing all game, slide tackles Donegan, and just clips his heel with, with the other foot, which is a very dangerous play. He knocked the ball away with his right foot and clipped Donegan's heels with his left foot, which could be a yellow card infraction. And I'll tell you, that's the third time that has happened to Donegan in this game, and Joe Maroney, the first couple of times, was absolutely livid. This time he was toned down a little bit, just saying, look, John, they're doing it again. The ball goes out of bounds, and it goes out off of Fred Carlos, so Sean Lilly will, well, he'll leave it for Mark DeMonte to throw in. We, I think, are going to see Joe's temper flare a little bit if that happens to Donegan again. They check Donegan's ankle on the uh, sideline. Chris Reeve trying to keep DeMonte from getting it in. DeMonte kicks it out over the end line. And Foley will get the goal kick. And now we have a quick substitution and coming right back into the game is Dan Donegan. The man who replaced him was Brian Anderson and Anderson goes back to the bench. So Donegan all right, they took a quick look at his ankle. Donegan is not big physically, but he's very tough, very tough competitor. Very frail looking. You really wouldn't believe that he plays the game the way he does. Here's Oceani out to Damani. Damani has plenty of room to get it into the area. He kicks it out over the end line again. He was not being marked at all by Delisandro. Delisandro playing almost a flex defense on him. If they do that in soccer. This is Borja on the far sideline. Ahead for Rammel. Back to Borja. Borja keeps it moving ahead. He's unable to get it to Donegan, however. Headed back. Lily trying to mark Churik. Lilly right on Churik's back, pushing him away from the ball, but Churik gets it back. Here's Reef picking it up and bringing it out to midfield. Reef goes wide to Tunson. Tunson and Oceani in a foot race. Tunson wins it, but Oceani with a sliding tackle takes him away from the ball, and I think that we are going to get our first card of the game. 
We have the card coming out of the shirt of referee John Buckley. Oceani will be getting the yellow card. And now John Buckley is serving notice. Buckley and Oceani with a few friendly words, as you can see there. Buckley serving notice. This has gone on long enough. Let's try to ease up a little bit. Now Dan Donegan will set up on the free kick. He usually likes to do this set up with Kanto Lulai, but Lulai ineligible for the game. And into the area by Donegan, getting a foot on it. a foot on it and putting it by Chris Whitcomb and with less than three minutes gone in the second half UConn has added to its lead two to nothing 258 the time of the goal the second half the scorer Kevin O'Hara for the University of Connecticut for O'Hara now that is his third goal of the season he has eight points now on the season here's the replay Donegan hits a driven ball into the box Syracuse defense very sloppy here doesn't goes by Borja goes by Reef and in comes O'Hara, marked very lightly, just places the ball underneath Whitcomb and through Paulson's legs. Pretty tough to do, but he did it. Tough to do, but it shows you what you can do if you have people cutting at different angles. You like to get two or three cutters into the area at different angles, and that's what happened. The ball by Donegan went by the first two, and uh, you have a little bit of disarray, and a lot of times in the area, you in the box, you have key, uh, defenders who have a tendency to stand around and ball watch a little bit, and O'Hara took advantage of that and put it home. It's a great point there, Scott. I think Syracuse defense did get caught ball watching there. UConn did create a lot of, a lot of confusion in the box. They like to do that. They like to create confusion, and it worked. Resulted in a goal. And Oceani feeds it to DeMonte. Oceani was the fellow who drew the yellow card that led to that setup by Donegan. And that was our first card of the game. A little bit of notice being served that things were getting a little bit too chippy. The veteran referee today, John Buckley. Oceani. <laughs> Oceani going to make his kick into the area. That was, that was a wise play by Oceani. Tunson keeps cheating in. He's only about eight yards away. Tunson is, has to be 10 yards away. And as Oceani approaches the ball, Tunson moves closer and closer. It's a nice play by both players, really. And it gets up in the area, head on the ball, and it goes just wide. I'll tell you what, that was number 22 for Syracuse. Andreas Montvilla from Brookfield, Connecticut, who got a head on the ball. And Tom Foley was really taken out of that play. It was just up to see where the ball was going to roll, and it rolled just a foot wide of the net. Here we see the goal again. Donegan cross, great cross, through Borja's legs by Churik. And here's O'Hara. Very calmly hits the ball into the net underneath Whitcomb and through Paulson's legs. Well, I think that was Mark Fish, number Mark three. Fish. And I think that maybe that was a case of a little too much ball watching because he ended up to be covering the same area that Chris Whitcomb was covering. Now the Huskies try to come back again. Wayne Churick far side, and we get a call by John Buckley. A trip on Syracuse. Play on for UConn. This is Dan Donegan. Donegan, who has assists on both goals, trying to turn the corner. He does, but it's taken away by Fish. Fish trying to bring it back for Syracuse. And Fish looking to get out to Montvila. Montvila taken off the ball by Kerry Rudick. It'll be a free kick for Syracuse. But Donegan with the assists on both goals today. Fish reads the game very well from a sweeper back position. It seems whenever a UConn forward gets by one of the Syracuse defenders, Fish is there to, to knock the ball away. And the ball headed away by Delisandro to Wayne Churick, and Churick again taken down. We'll see how he comes up. No problem with the ankle on this play. Earlier in the game, Churick took a shot in the ankle that appeared to really be hampering him, but he's still in there. That's a problem that Churik has had off and on through most of his career. It's Diego Borja for our side. Borja tries to get it ahead to D'Alessandro. And it'll be Syracuse on the kick. Mark Fish will handle the kick. And 
and Donegan tries to keep the kick low, but it gets up in almost into the area. Tunson, Oceani charging in on him, kicks it back toward the Yukon goal, but going wide and picking it up is Fred Carlos. Oceano, Oceani marking him very closely. Carlos getting around him and kicking it off Oceani. And it goes out of bounds to throw in for Yukon. I don't think Joe Maroney likes to see that, Scott. You don't want to see your defenders dribbling the ball in the defensive third as Carlos just did. If Oceani dispossessed them, Syracuse would have had a good scoring opportunity. Well, that was a nice one touch out of the corner by Steve Rammel looking for Tunson. It's kicked out by Fish, and Rammel will throw it in to O'Hara. O'Hara, who just scored his third goal for the University of Connecticut this season as UConn leads 2 to nothing. We're early in the second half. Fred Carlos with the ball. UConn looking for its fifth win against two losses and a tie on the season. This is Chris Reef, and again, he's going in deep. He's taken down by Mark Fish. And we'll get another setup just outside the area for the UConn Huskies. So Dan Donegan will get an opportunity to go for his third assist of the game. I think we'll see Dan Donegan shoot the ball directly on this play. It's only about 22, 24 yards out. I think we'll see a direct shot on net. And we see that picket fence set up by the orange men at the front of the area. And here's Reef going forward. Makes a nice run for the sweep back position. Gets tripped up by Fish. Short feed into Churik in the area. He gets a shot on goal, but it's cleared away by Whitcomb. Yukon trying to get it back in. Rammel heads it in. And it comes back out. Borja trying to catch up to the ball. Ooh, Borja with an elbow right to the head of Oceani. Oceani looking at John Buckley saying, hey, you gave me a card. Aren't you going to give them one? This is Steve Schaefer for Syracuse now. Picked up by Reef, but he gets it to the corner. Delisandro picks it up. He'll try to dribble it away, and he does. Here's Oceani coming out of the back with a ball. We'll see Borja coming into the picture very soon to make a rough play on Oceani. Borja just elbows Oceani in the head. Oh. Good acting job by Oceani trying to draw the yellow card on Borja. <laughs> okay, this is Bruce now trying to get into the area. Unable to. DeMonte tries to get it in. It's cleared away by D'Alessandro. It'll be a uh, throw in for Steve Schaefer and the Orange Men. Schaefer back to Silver. Silver tries to get it across to Fish. Donegan moves it ahead. Off Fish's arm. Fish and Donegan in a foot race. So far it's Donegan, but it's cleared away. And Donegan being held. We almost had a takedown on that play. The ball was cleared away by Fred Paulson. Paulson getting a warning now from referee John Buckley on that play. Donegan in a foot race with Fish and Paulson. He beat Fish clearly as he was going for the ball. Paulson held him to keep him from getting to it. Donegan kicked it, and it'll be a free kick for uh, Syracuse. Here's Paulson now. Long feed ahead for DeMonte. DeMonte being marked by D'Alessandro. D'Alessandro kicks it back to Schaefer now for Syracuse. Schaefer marked by O'Hara, and Oceani takes it to the side of the area and tries to get it in off D'Alessandro. It goes out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Syracuse. D'Alessandro arguing that Oceani had touched the ball again before it went out. This is DeMonte getting into the area, but we have a trip called on DeMonte. He took down Wayne Churik as he tried to get the ball into the area. Here's Dan Donigan streaking forward, gets by Fish, and here comes Paulson knocking the ball out of bounds. These two tussle for a while. Paulson grabs Donigan's shirt. Almost could have gotten a yellow card for that. And then Donigan with the hold. Both players being warned on that play. Long kick out by Tom Foley. Offside, says referee. Connecticut offside, says referee John Buckley. And Syracuse gets the free kick for Mark Fish. Chris Reef heads it back toward the midfield area. Damani picks it up. Tunson tries to clear it away. Gets around Schaefer, but Fish picks it up. Tunson on the hold, and Fish will get the free kick. Whoop, 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 says John Buckley. Let's set it up where the infraction happened. As soon as we get somebody a uh, ball over the end line, we'll get some Syracuse subs in. 
Number 14 on your screen is Crouch, David Crouch. Dan Donegan picking up the ball far side for UConn and clearing it ahead. Diego Borja getting by one Syracuse defender and we get a push. And Borja and the Huskies will get a free kick. Joe Maroney is out on the field. Joe Maroney again looking for a yellow card. Dan Donegan going to the corner, trying to get around Paulson. Paulson kicks it out of bounds and throw in for the Huskies. But on that last play, Borja being taken down and Joe Maroney came out on the field screaming for a yellow card. The throw into Donegan. And Joe Maroney standing Carlos. on the field could have been given a yellow card by referee Buckley, but I don't believe Buckley saw him on the field. Donegan gets it into the area. Oh, Harrow with a foot on the ball and it goes just wide. Donegan had three players in the area in front of him, Steve Rammel, then Kevin O'Hara, then Mike Tunson. It went by Rammel, the second man in the area. O'Hara got a foot on the ball. And here's the ever-dangerous Dan Donegan with a cross, which is going to find his way to Kevin O'Hara, who comes in, nicely hits the ball one time. You don't want to take two touches this close to the goal. Has goalkeeper Whitcomb beat, but just goes, glances off the post and goes wide. Well, you had one defender worried about Rammel. You had Whitcomb worried about Tunson on the other side. And the ball went to O'Hara, and he got off a good shot, missing by inches. Here's Whitcomb now, clearing it out to Schaefer. Schaefer down the near sideline, kicks it ahead, looking for DeMonte. It goes off D'Alessandro. It'll be a throw in for Syracuse. And we had the substitutions come in on that last play. We told you about David Kraus, Crouch. This is Chris Wheelmeister holding, handling the uh, throw in. And in front, Syracuse with a chance. That was Crouch and a kick wide by number 24, Raymond Bruce. Bruce nice. had the angle, I think. He had some open net to shoot at and holding his head as he shoots it wide. It's very composed play there by number 14 on Syracuse. David Crouch. David Crouch. Didn't have the shot himself. Very unselfishly knocks the ball wide to Couch. Comes in, hits a nice shot, but wide. Once again, Scott, in that situation, you want to get the ball on net. I think Crouch would have been better to shoot the ball the inside of his foot to test Foley instead of driving the ball so fast with the instep. He would have had better accuracy with the inside of his foot. Could have gotten it on goal. And Syracuse now clearing it back to their keeper and trying to come back the other way. This is Silver. Silver. There's Tim Hankinson trying to figure out exactly what he's got to do to crack what has been a very good UConn defense this season. He's got to be concerned, Scott. He doesn't want to be 0-2-1 in the Big East. He's already got one loss and one tie. The loss to St. John's, the tie to BC. If he loses today, he's almost out of the Big East tournament. <laughs> Here comes Syracuse with an opportunity. Oceani on the head, and it goes up over the goal. That was a nice setup. Damani on the far side. Putting the ball up in the air. Now that was Wildmeister on the far side who put the ball up in the air. And Oceani got a good head on it, but just over the goal. Now, Dan Donegan for UConn. Trying to get it downfield. He is pushed from behind by Wildmeister. And here come the Huskies again. Again, this is Chris Reef. Now, you'll see, you can see right there, DeMonte getting in on Reef early, not wanting him to make one of those long rushes. And here come the Orange men. Ahead to Mark Fish. Fish in deep on defense now. A sliding tackle. This one by Bill Lawrence. And taken down from behind again is Dan Donegan. And here's Joe Maroney again. Joe is going, what are you gonna what are you doing? You're letting him brutalize my star player. He's looking to the sky saying, when ref when referee Buckley are you gonna give a yellow card? He's scared Donegan's gonna get injured. In the area is Steve Rammel. He's taken down by the keeper. Chris Whitcomb and Rammel get into it now. Standing over him is Rich Bayman trying to protect his scorer. Steve Rammel in on goal. He was taken down by the keeper, Chris Whitcomb. And then Whitcomb and Rammel had some words and some punches. The game is really starting to get out of hand, Gary. It might have been a good idea if John Buckley had been out with that card earlier as the chippiness has continued here. I think you're right, Scott. I think we see, need to see a lot more yellow cards. Here's the altercation. Rammel tries to chip it over the goalie, the goal, goalie Whitcomb. Whitcomb held, holds on to Rammel's legs. Rammel just standing there right now. Whitcomb won't let go of Rammel's legs. 
Now Ramel sort of gives Wickham a little shove with his cleats, which Wickham didn't like. He's gonna get up and go after Ramel. Throws a punch at Ramel, and I can't believe Buckley has not given the yellow card to either Whitcomb or Ramel. I think both players should have been issued warnings for that situation. I think that you're right, Gary. There could be cards. So we get a card on Ian Bruno. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know. Maybe if we uh, if we can pick up the remainder of that play, I don't know if that will show us, unless Bruno said something because it was Rich Bayman who was standing over the keeper and Ramel trying to protect his forward. And I don't know how all of a sudden Bruno got into it. We may have missed something while we were looking at the replay of that. But Ian Bruno, the freshman for UConn, has just been issued a yellow card. I'll tell you, Scott, I think uh, the game is totally out of control now. I think we need to see yellow cards to get the game back under control. It's getting very physical out there. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I, to be very honest with you, and I don't know what Gruno did, it's quite possible that we missed something while we were looking at the replay, but one way, either way, I still think if there was gonna be a yellow card issued on that play, it should have gone either to either Whitcomb or Ramble, and probably both. I think the yellow card went to the wrong player in this case in an effort to try to settle things down. Anyway, UConn now will set things up in the backfield, and here's Chris Reef. Far side of D'Alessandro, he kicks it out. It'll be a throw-in now for Syracuse. This has gone from chippy to very physical here. D'Alessandro taken down, no call. The ball off DeMonte. DeMonte kicks the ball off of a Husky defender. That was Kerry Rudick, and it'll be a corner kick for Syracuse. Scott Oceani will set up the corner kick for the Orange Men. Cutting in front is Weilmeister. He kicks it out to Fish. Fish will try to get it in the area around Borja. He gets it back to Oceani. Oceani unable to get it by Bill Lawrence, but it did go off of Lawrence, so we should have another corner kick for Oceani, who is limping to the corner now for Syracuse. That's Mark Oceani, or Scott Oceani, excuse me. Oceani puts it up in front this time, trying to get ahead on it was, well, I couldn't see who that was, but I will just take a guess that that was uh, number nine, Sean Lilly in front trying to get ahead on it. It looked like number eight, but it couldn't have been because it was eight who took the corner kick. This is Steve Schaefer for Syracuse now. And uh, Ian Bruno tries to get it to be a UConn throw in, but John Buckley says, no, sir. And Weilmeister will handle it now. Weilmeister trying to get it in the area. Up in front is DeMonte, back to Schaefer now. Schaefer taken off the ball by Donegan. Donegan loses it out of bounds. Mark Fish with the throw in. The tempo has been very fast here all afternoon. It has been a very chippy game and it has become extremely physical. We have had two yellow cards issued in the game today. One for each team in front. Oh, what a great opportunity. Almost getting the shot was David Crouch, or actually getting the shot, almost getting the goal was David Crouch. Tom Foley slid into that ball and took it down for the Huskies. Here's Diego Borja to Ian Gruno now. Bruno loses it to Schaefer, Schaefer controlling the ball. Back puts it down into the corner. Kerry Rudick with Weilmeister. Rudick kicks it, keeps it in bounds. Out of bounds off Schaefer. Here's Wheelmeister with a nice cross into Crouch. Crouch comes in, hits a nice one-time shot. Foley smothers it very well. Good opportunity there for Syracuse. Unfortunately, he couldn't have gotten a foot to the left or right of goalie Tom Foley, but Foley did make a nice save. Well, Foley came out when he saw the ball was gonna stay on the ground. He did a very nice job of sliding out and extending his whole body in front of it and then controlling the ball. Steve Schaefer will throw it in for Syracuse. We're under 25 minutes to play now. UConn leading two to nothing. Diego Borja kicks it long downfield where Mark Fish will pick it up for Syracuse and he'll continue to control the ball. Out to the sideline, and it goes out of bounds, a throw in for UConn. 
Fish now in there. Controlling the ball for the Huskies is Rich Bayman. Trying to get it in front to Ian Gruno. It's headed back out. Now trying to get it into Dan Donegan. Donegan picks it up, being very closely marked. This is Wayne Churick. Churick into the area, or trying to get into the area, kicks it just wide. Steve Schaefer getting a foot on it for Syracuse to keep that ball from going in on net. And we have wholesale substitutions now for UConn. Kerry Rudick leaves the field. Coming onto the field, Fred Carlos, Mike Tunson also on the field for UConn. Also leaving is Rich Bayman. Trying to pick up all the numbers. Steve Rammel back for the Huskies. Here's the replay. Donegan was just fouled, but referee Buckley made a nice decision there to let play go on. Churik's on some fancy footwork here. Outmaneuvers three Syracuse defenders before the shot gets deflected wide. Nice effort by Churik. Well, that was good because uh, Jessica Churik uh, just let it go, and just as he did, Steve Schaefer got a foot on it to change the trajectory. The go corner kick by Donegan. Churik getting ahead on it in front. Cleared away by Mark Fish. Out to Bill Lawrence. Lawrence back into the area. Thompson kicks it high. Oh. Tell you, Scott, UConn looks so dangerous on every corner kick they have. Can't let them get too many in the game. They've already scored on one corner and they're looking dangerous on every single one. You know, Mike Tunson had a shaky start to this game, I thought. He was kind of lackadaisical early in the game, but he really has picked up the tempo. He played himself out of the starting lineup early in the season, but uh, in this second half, he has really been getting himself into some good positions in the uh, area. This is Chris Reef taken down from behind now by Silver. Well, Reef's an Iron Man, Scott. He's played in 82, started 82 out of 83 games in three years, and he's played 52 consecutive games, started 52 consecutive and games. And he plays most of the minutes of all of these games, too. Reef now putting it up in front. It goes behind Donegan, off the goalkeeper, Chris Whitcomb, then over the end line. And dangerous Dan goes back to the corner to try to set it up for the Huskies again. And once again, Kevin O'Hara will play on the keeper. Chris Whitcomb calling out the signals. Whitcomb's looking up and saying, hey guys, what are you doing? Where are my defenders? And Dan Donegan puts it up, almost a header in, but a ball cleared way back out to Chris Reef. Chris puts it back up, tries to get it into the area. It's taken down there by Jeff Silver. And we have Carlos called on a hold, free kick for Syracuse. UConn scored in the first half to take a one to nothing lead. On a goal by Todd D'Alessandro. His first as a Husky. Set up on a corner kick by Dan Donegan. And then in the first three minutes of the second half, Syracuse trying to break into the area now. This is Oceani heading it over to DeMonte. DeMonte now putting it up in the area. He's got Wildmeister in front, but taking the ball down with Wildmeister right in front of him is Tom Foley who kicks it out to Kevin O'Hara. As I said, three minutes into the second half, it was O'Hara scoring for UConn, again off a feed by Donegan. UConn leading two to nothing as Churik heads the ball back to Foley. That, that last save by Foley was excellent. Despite the pressure of the Syri two Syracuse forwards, Foley was able to rise up and hold on to the ball, which isn't easy to do in a crowd. And UConn loses the ball out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Syracuse. The Orange men will have been playing at a torrid pace all day. It's got to be affecting them after the game they played at Boston College two nights ago, which was a very tiring game, and they did not get a full 48 hours rest before this one. And now they're in a position where, as tired as they may be, they have got to scramble. As rapid as the pace of this game has been, they may have to pick it up even and find themselves another gear because they're under 20 minutes to go, and they trail two to nothing. It's almost time to push the panic button for Syracuse. They're gonna have to start moving players forward as we always state in our broadcast, what's the difference if you lose five nothing or two nothing? So they might as well push forward. And we might see UConn score another goal here. And we might try, might see Syracuse try and equalize. Time to cut the cards on the riverboat. You gotta start gambling. Looking at the clock, as I said, we're under 20 minutes, 19 and a half to play. UConn leading two to nothing. This is Mike Tunson for the Huskies. Tunson charging downfield. He stops, tries to clear back to Reef. Cleared away by Fish, but Churik picks it up for UConn. Outside to Bill Lawrence. Lawrence marked by Wildmeister. He gets it ahead to Reef, but Reef right, loses yeah. it to Schaefer and takes him down. No call by John Buckley. Play on, says Buckley, and Reef down the sideline to Bill Lawrence. 
Lawrence gets it into the area, but it's headed away by Mark Fish. This is Churik now for UConn. He loses it, Tungsten picks it up. Get out of the way, you might stop Ryan Malone shot. has it checked away from him. Scott Oceani with the sliding tackle. Bill Lawrence puts it ahead to Wayne Churik. Churik to Rammel. Rammel with a shot, and it's blocked, but not controlled. Whitcomb blocking it, unable to control it, but unfortunately for Whitcomb, there was not a Husky home. I think Joe Maroney's a little bit upset with that. Rammel broke free, got a good shot on goal, but no other Husky forward hustled in to get a shot at the rebound. Okay, Chris Reef picks it up and brings it back for UConn. The Huskies have been on the attack most of the second half. They have applied a lot of pressure to Chris Whitcomb. This is Brian Malone going deep. We knew we'd see a lot of Malone today. He puts it into the area in front, tries to get Rammel, but it's cleared away. I was just about to say, we knew we'd see a lot of Malone today with the injury to Brian Parker and the ineligibility due to red card of Canto Lulai. This is Fred Carlos trying to get it into the area. He's unable to do so. Rammel picks it up outside and playing it around the corner with Rammel is Scott Oceani. Rammel takes him down. And we'll get a free kick for Syracuse. Once again, Oceani showing his experience there. He felt a little bump from behind, just fell down, knew the referee would call a foul. We would, uh, we would have a chance to see Syracuse a third time this season if they made it to the Big East tournament. But their hopes of doing that right now are running down with the clock. This is Crouch very closely marking Fred Carlos, who gets the ball to Reef. Reef moves upfield. Crouch trying to come up to pick, uh, pick him up. Dan Donegan now ready to break in, but coming out very, very deep to pick it up is Whitcomb. That was a dangerous play there by Whit Whitcomb, putting Paulson under pressure. I think Whit Whitcomb would have done better to just to blast the ball long and wide, give his defenders a time, time to recover. Okay, now we pick it up again. It comes out to Churik for UConn, but it's taken away, and Rammel takes it away again, back to Carlos. Carlos has it taken away, but Delisandro moves in. Delisandro moving in deep. Back to Tunson, back to Donegan. Donegan moving in in front of Crouch, tries to get it ahead to Kevin O'Hara. He's unable to do so, or to Brian Malone unable to do so. Here come the Orange men to Oceani. Oceani has it cleared away from him by Reef to Tunson. Back in on goal, and Whitcomb will pick it up, and the pace slows just a little. Ticket information for all University of Connecticut athletic events. All you have to do is call area code 203-486-2724. And the Huskies right now showing a very exciting reason why you might want to pick up some tickets to one of their soccer games as Kevin O'Hara loses the ball out of bounds. Jeff Silver will throw it in. For the Orange men, the Huskies looking pretty good as they attempt to pick up their fifth win of the season. Gary, we came into this game with UConn ranked 18th in the nation, and that was even after losing two very tough games. We'll pick it up, uh, headed out by Tunson in the area. Chris Reef picks it up and kicks it away, looking for Dan Donegan as they come back to midfield. Well, we're starting to see the UConn forwards with a bit more space now. Scott Syracuse is pushing forward to try to get their first goal. And I think we can see UConn score the third goal very soon. UConn opened up 3-0-1. Then they went out west. They played in the MetLife tournament, playing two of the top ten teams in the nation, number one Fresno State and number seven San Francisco. They lost both games by a goal, could have won each game, and Malone turns and fires wide. They, could, they were in a position to win both of those games, played very tough out there, and despite those two losses, for the first time in over a year, they found themselves back in the national top 20, ranked at 18. So I would have to guess that after wins over Boston University and an apparent win here against Syracuse today, UConn will move up in the national polls. They will probably hold at number two in New England behind Harvard, setting up a big game that we have coming up for you next on Nesson. I got to agree with you there, Scott. Despite their mediocre record, Syracuse and Boston University are two very good soccer teams. I think we're going to see a lot more wins out of those two teams as, as the season goes on. Okay, this is Donegan ahead to Bill Lawrence. Lawrence gets it into the area. He's got Rammel cutting, and Rammel shoots it wide. Rammel was being very, very closely marked by DeMonte on that play, and that forced him to shoot quickly. He also had Whitcomb coming out to cut down the angle, and Rammel fired it wide, but a good setup. 
And here, here's the replay. Here's Reef with the ball, I believe. Sending it through. Nice ball through to Ramble, who had a little bit more time and just shot the ball wide. He did have time to get a good shot on goal. Just mishit the ball. He felt the pressure of DeMonte. Nice hustle by DeMonte to put some pressure on Ramble. If, if DeMonte didn't run back, I think we would have seen UConn's third goal. And Mark Fisher's goal kick went out of bounds, so UConn gets the throw in in the possession. This is Chris Reef at midfield. Reef moving it out far to Bill Lawrence. Lawrence tried to get it ahead to O'Hara. It overshot him. Here come the Orange men. Back to Lawrence. Lawrence loses it out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Syracuse. We have 13 and a half minutes to play in the second half. UConn leading two to nothing. It has been a very fast, very physical game here this afternoon between these two Big East rivals. We have a takedown in front and is uh, the referee John Buckley has stopped the clock. We are going to get another card, I believe. Yes, we are. And the card goes against Kerry Rudick, who took down Mark Damani just before Damani went into the area. One more stride by Damani, and we might have an opportunity for Syracuse to get back in the game on a penalty kick. I don't think Rudick realized that he did have some defensive support there. He did not have to drag down Damani as he did, because there were two UConn backs right there. Now, this is a very dangerous opportunity right here for Syracuse. Damani looks like he's going to try and shoot the ball on goal. Well, I'm going to have to correct myself. That's. Uh, Wildmeister who was taken down. He and Damati look so much alike physically. That's Damati with the kick and it's headed out of the area by Rudick. This is Steve Schaefer being marked by Rudick. Rudick with a sliding tackle takes the ball away and clears it down the sideline. That was a bad set piece there by Syracuse. When you're only 18 yards out, you want to get a really good opportunity and the, the pass to Damati just wasn't good. He could not get a good shot. Oceani gets a foot on it in front, but Foley clears it out wide to Dan Donegan. And Syracuse loses it out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for UConn. Ian Gruno handing it. Gruno, the freshman, to the junior, Dan Donegan. And Donegan kicks it off a Syracuse defender. We'll have another opportunity for Gruno to throw it in, and he does back to Donegan again. Donegan looking for Bayman on that play, unable to get it to him. Here come the orange. This is DeMonte with the ball. DeMonte moving it way downfield. That's Charles Mullen trying to get it in the area. He does, but Kerry Rudick clears it out high and wide and over the goal, over the uh, sideline. Steve Schaefer with the throw in. Mullen with the ball again, again putting it into the area, headed out. Picked up by O'Hara and back to Fish. Fish to Schaefer. And this time it'll be Reef clearing it away for the Huskies. Reef trying to get around Wildmeister, off Wildmeister's foot, throw in for UConn. Chris Reef going for the long throw in ahead to O'Hara. O'Hara unable to get ahead on it, and it goes back to Mark Fish, who lets it go out of bounds to throw it in. Schaefer. Ahead for DeMonte, O'Hara gets it back to Fred Carlos. Carlos to Anderson. Oh! Taken down from behind on that play. That was Bill Lawrence taken down. Lawrence, a uh, little bit of trouble getting up, but he seems to be all right. Bill Lawrence, a sophomore out of Columbia, Connecticut. Here's Lawrence streaking downfield with Paulson. Just gets tripped up by Paulson. Seemed to be a little injured on the play, but got up and ran downfield. A little push by Paulson as well. And another dangerous situation for UConn as Dan Donegan gets to set it up right outside the area. Donegan up in front. He had somebody open. There's O'Hara kicking it high and wide. The Syracuse defense looks very porous on, on crosses into the net so far. Whitcomb has had no help at all by his backs heading the ball wide, Scott. Well, that time Donegan had Brian Anderson open in front, or excuse me, Rich Bayman open in front. And Donegan got it over the head of Bayman. O'Hara got a foot on it, but you're right, not a lot of help back there for Whitcomb. Well, seems like he's got more Huskies in front of him than Orange men. Defensively, inside that penalty box, you have to win the head balls in the air. If not, it's going to be various, da very dangerous opportunities. We've seen a, 
a lot of those so far today. And here goes the cheer at the Connecticut Soccer Stadium as we have hit the 10 minute mark and the one minute cheer goes on by the UConn fans. Mark Fish trying to get it back for Syracuse. UConn leading two to nothing with nine and a half minutes to play. This is Mark Fish. And a long shot taken by Charles Mullen wide. I'll tell you, Scott, this is college soccer at its best. Great atmosphere. Great atmosphere here. The UConn fans are just truly amazing. Well, I'll tell you, we were uh, talking earlier that it didn't look like we'd have much of a crowd today because of the conditions. It was chilly, rain-threatening, very overcast. But we have got at least between 2,500 and 3,000 people in here today. As they cheer on the Huskies to what appears to be their fifth victory of the season. Under nine minutes to play in UConn leading, two to nothing. Charles Mullen with the ball for Syracuse. Ahead to Mark Fish. Fish out to DeMonte. I'll tell you, it goes out off of Chris Reef, and we will have DeMonte setting up a corner kick for Syracuse. Up in front and headed away. That looked like Kerry Rudick getting ahead on the ball. This is Mark Fish trying to get it in, but this one is going to go out of bounds and UConn will get the throw in. I'm, I was just gonna say, I'm glad we got another chance to uh, see Syracuse so we can do them a little more justice than we were able to do against Boston College when we really had difficulty just telling who the teams were, let alone who the players were. And uh, it's nice to have another opportunity to uh, give these guys some, some exposure. Yeah, you know, we, uh, you know who we should also uh, give a little credit to from Friday night is uh, our crew, the guys who had to handle the cameras and stand out there in the rain. I don't think we should mention uh, John Vassallo at all, though. He sat in a truck uh, the other night while we were He <laughs> stayed nice and warm. He, he came out to greet us after the game. He had his umbrella. He didn't even get muddy like we did, Scott. <laughs> so we won't mention John Vassallo, but to the guys who handled the cameras and uh, to Mike Wallet who had to work up in the booth with us, Boy, you guys turned in a heck of a night the other night. Hazardous duty pay all around. It's coming out of Vassallo's paycheck. No comment from the truck on that, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> this is Ian Gruno with the ball for UConn. Out to Wayne Churik, Churik back to Gruno. And Gruno's taken down from behind. A free kick for UConn. The Huskies just about to salt this one away. Seven minutes to play, they lead two to nothing. And uh, I think overall, Joe Maroney has got to be happy with the effort today. There were some moments when he was unhappy with the play of his players. More moments when he was unhappy with the officiating. The ball comes into the area. Steve Rammel tries to get a hand, uh, foot on it. He's unable to do so and it's cleared out. I think you're right, Scott. I think Joe Maroney's very happy of his team. They're undefeated in New England, undefeated in the Big East Conference. What more can you ask for? Boy, I'll tell you, last year they were in such a big hole early, 0-2 in New England early, 0-2 in the conference early as Dan Donegan tries to get in the area. And with the whistle blowing, Diego Borja just hauls it down with his hands. But they were in a very early hole, both in New England and in the Big East last year. This year they have completely reversed the situation, and they are really in a position of control uh, in both New England and the Big East. So Joe Maroney with a big win today. Wayne Churik heads it back to Dan Donegan. The Huskies refuse to let up the pressure, even though they have that lead two to nothing. Uh, it, it really is, I think, nice to see a team that has that kind of a lead with a clock winding down, and they aren't letting up. They are not playing destructively. They are not playing for the defense. They continue to make their mark on the area. They continue to charge the area. Syracuse looking for an opportunity now. That was Crouch with a foot on the ball, and out co to cover it up is Tom Foley. And again, we'll probably see UConn attack the Syracuse goal again. They have not played destructively as the clock is wound down. Foley will take a little time here, though, as he talks things over with Chris Reef. And a long kick downfield, and Donegan's going to make a move for it. Donegan trying to get around Fish. Fish heads it back, gets the ball by Tunson. Picked up by Mullen. Mullen to DeMonte, to Silver. 
looking for Oceani. Rudick picks it up, clears it out of the area. This is going to go out of bounds off Rudick. Rudick keeping it from going over the end line to prevent the corner kick, but it'll be a Syracuse throw in for Oceani. Once again, we've seen a very steady, solid game by Kerry Rudick, winning the dangerous balls in the air and playing the other team's most dangerous player. Here he's playing Oceani, who's a very talented performer for the Orange Men. Aren't you glad that we've featured him on our pregame show? Definitely so. What an insight on our part as Foley goes up and hauls down what was not really a dangerous shot. The University of Connecticut men's soccer team returns to action this Wednesday when it hosts New England rival Harvard at 3 p.m. in stores. That's the game all New England is looking for. On Sunday, September 27th, national powerhouse UCLA comes to the Connecticut Soccer Stadium for a 1 o'clock match against the Huskies. For all ticket information, call area code 203-486-2724. Diego Borja heads the ball back to Todd D'Alessandro. The Huskies retain control here. Kerry Rudick just clears it back to Tom Foley, and now the Huskies are easing up the attack a little bit as we're under four minutes to play, and they have the 2 to nothing lead. Tom Foley will take his time clearing it out, and I think uh, when you consider the way the Huskies have maintained the attack all afternoon, they deserve to slow it down a little bit now. They've got this wind salted away, but they aren't slowing it down. Rammel to Tunson, back to Rammel. Rammel tries to get a foot on it. He's unable to. Back to Donegan. Donegan trying to get it back in the area now. Cleared away by Fish. But the Huskies again, just as I say, they start to take their time. The Huskies come back on a rapid offensive again. UConn not letting up at all. Joe Maroney has got to be very pleased with this. His players just continue to put the pressure on. Not only is Joe Maroney happy, but the fans are happy and I'm happy. Scott, I like to see this kind of exciting soccer. This is what fills the stadiums across the country. Not, not defensive, boring matches, but attacking soccer. And even though UConn has this pretty much salted away, Tunson goes with a header wide. They continue to attack. We're under three minutes and we're gonna see wholesale changes now for the Huskies, giving some of the youngsters a chance. Ian Gruno comes back in for UConn. Some white jersey. There's Brian Malone back in for UConn. Donegan and Rammel leaving the field. Two guys who have applied a lot of pressure this afternoon. Rich Bayman back in for UConn now. Well, neither one uh, got in the scoring card today. Donegan, Donegan did get an assist. Neither one got a goal, but I'm sure the Syracuse defenders are going to be seeing number six and number eight in their sleep tonight. Well, they have been up there in the area all afternoon, and boy, they have seen Dan Donegan just pull the dangerous trigger from the corner so many times this afternoon. Donegan with two assists as he leaves the game today. And uh, you're right, boy, I'll tell you, the, the, even though Rammel didn't score today, he has been a pressure point up front as he's played half of his afternoon right in front of Chris Whitcomb. Bayman with the takedown, and Syracuse will get the free kick. We're under two minutes. UConn about to win its second Big East game, and it's really uh, just uh, been a great week for the Huskies. A Big East game, a New England game, coming off two gallant losing efforts on the West Coast. And I'll tell you, I talked to Joe Maroney earlier this week. Malone heads it away and it's fired high and wide. I talked to Joe Maroney on Monday, or Tuesday after they got back from San Francisco, and he looked like the Cheshire Cat trying to conceal the grin because even though they came away with those two losses, you could tell that he was very, very pleased with the way his team played on the West Coast, and especially going into a game against Boston University. UConn on the goal kick. Belted out long by Bill Lawrence. One minute. One minute to play here at the UConn Soccer Stadium in stores as Brian Malone clears it ahead to Brian Anderson for UConn. Mike Tunson still going wide around Jeff Silver. Tunson trying to get a uh, shot at the area. He's still got control in the corner. He goes around Silver. Silver called on the hold, I believe. Nice creative move there by Tunson. The Syracuse defender can only hold his shirt or try to instruct him to keep Tunson from getting into a very dangerous area. And again, they were down to 30 seconds. And UConn continued to put on the pressure. Delisandro getting it in front. Headed up in front. And Syracuse will just clear it out of the area. Delisandro with it now. Whatever happens now doesn't matter. We got 10 seconds to go. And UConn has the win. Two to nothing. Four, three. Two, one, zero, the clock winds down. 
The Yukon Huskies have their fifth win, their second Big East win. Joe Maroney, a year removed from hard times, finds himself in a position of control on the soccer pitch again. UConn winning it two to nothing. Gary, chippy, physical, but a good game, and pretty well played by both sides. Very well played by both sides, Scott. We saw some nice attacking soccer by both teams. We saw UConn come up with two goals, and I'm sure Joe Maroney is just as pleased with his backs who got goalie Tom Foley a shutout. So as the UConn Huskies wave to their fans here at the Storrs Soccer Stadium, we'll tell you once again that uh, UConn and Harvard are coming up next. That's the match that all of New England is looking for. And once again, from the University of Connecticut Soccer Stadium in Storrs, we'll remind you the final score, UConn 2, Syracuse nothing. We'll be back to wrap it up right after these messages. Well, we are back at the University of Connecticut Soccer Stadium in Storrs, Connecticut, where UConn has just upped its record on the season to 5-2-1, two 2-0 and one, two and oh in the Big East, 2-0 and oh in New England with a 2 to nothing win over Syracuse. Boy, you talk about rolling deuces. UConn had deuces wild, 2-0 and oh in New England, 2-0 and oh in the Big East, 2 nothing over Syracuse. And uh, UConn, Gary, really played a game that has to please Coach Joe Maroney. I agree, Scott. They, they attacked very well. They defended very well. The goalkeeper, Tom Foley, played great. What more can you ask for? Well, what more you could ask for, I guess, after you have a one to nothing lead at halftime, two to nothing lead. So the Huskies wasted very little time in going about that. With less than three minutes gone in the second half and up two to nothing, it was Dan Donegan teaming with Kevin O'Hara to make it two to nothing. Dan Donegan here picking up the second assist of the game off a foul. Here is the cross in. Syracuse defenders do not clear. In comes Kevin O'Hara. Kevin O'Hara here gets the ball, places the ball right underneath Whitcomb and through Mark Fish's legs. Nice goal by O'Hara, unfortunate for the Syracuse defense, but all game long, Scott, they failed to clear that to the ball in front of the net, and it really cost them on that goal. And again, as the game wore on, it appeared that maybe later in the game, the factors, the uh, game against Boston College the other night, and not getting a full two days rest started to wear on the Orange men, and UConn just kept a vicious attack in front of Chris Whitcomb throughout the afternoon. Well, once again, for the final time, our final score from the University of Connecticut, UConn 2, Syracuse nothing. Tonight's game has been brought to you in part by Bush Beer, the beer with the taste as smooth as its name, Bush. Our next New England college soccer matchup can be seen this Wednesday at 10.30 p.m. as the Harvard Crimson travel to stores to meet the Yukon Huskies in the game the entire New England soccer world is waiting for. The executive producer of New England College Sports on Nesson is Bob Whitelaw. Tonight's game has been produced by and directed by John Vassallo. The associate director is Mike Wallert. The graphic coordinator is Tom McNeely. New England College Soccer has been a presentation of Nesson, your New England Sports Network. We deliver. We're back at the Connecticut Soccer Stadium in stores where Seton Hall is celebrating its second straight Big East Soccer Championship with a 2-1 to one win in a very well-played championship game with U UConn. And we have heard a little bit about the game from the Seton Hall perspective. Let's go back down to Gary Swanson on the far sideline and get a little bit from UConn coach Joe Maroney. Coach Maroney, it seemed like two different games out there. First half, Seton Hall dominated. Second half, you dominated. Do you have anything to account for that? Well, I think the first half, the wind was a factor against us. We chose to go against the wind the first half, and we, I felt that if we could uh, contain well during the first half and keep them scoreless the second half, the wind would be out with us. Secondly, uh, we wanted to play a high-paced game, substitute, so the second half we'd be fitter than they. 
and uh, I think in both situations, uh, tactically, I felt that uh, it worked to our advantage. The difference was, of course, that the individual skill that they have in the box, the extra poise, got them the two goals. And as you could see in the second half, we had equal chances in the box, but unfortunately, we didn't have the ability to put the ball away. Coach, you obviously will be receiving a bid. You most likely will be playing Harvard. Uh, how do you think your chances are in the NCAA tournament? Well, I felt we should have been picked last year for the tournament, and the committee bypassed us. So I'm not taking anything for granted at this point. Uh, I'll just have to wait and see. Okay, thank you very much, Coach. Okay, UConn coach Joe Maroney, and that is a statement that he has made to several members of the media several times this season as uh, it appeared more and more that he was headed for the NCAA tournament. He will not take that for granted. He is still extremely disappointed about losing the bid despite the very strong finish that he had to the tournament, uh, to the season last year. And uh, what further disappointed him last year was being told by the committee that his team was never seriously considered. But the Huskies made a very proud showing for themselves here today in the championship game of the Big East tournament, falling to Seton Hall two to one. And uh, for the Huskies, well, they'll finish the season now with a 13, six and three record. And uh, Seton Hall with its second straight Big East championship. Again, let me just run down the scoring for you again to tell you how it all came about. Again, the game-winning goal belonging to Ian Hennessy, who has played a little bit hampered today, as he told me before the game coming in with a pulled muscle. Pat O'Kelly from Peter Matashak at 34-33 of the first half to open it up. Ian Hennessy from Monaghan at 36-22. And then Dan Donegan finished off the scoring at 76-33 for UConn from Reef and Lulai. Now, we are, uh, again, ready to... Uh, just tell you that Seton Hall has won its second straight Big East Championship. The final score for the final time. Well, before we do break away, we have one more person we'd like to hear from, one of the defensive stars for the University of Connecticut in today's championship game. Let's go back down to Gary Swanson on the far sideline. He's got UConn defender Todd D'Alessandro. Todd, you played exceptionally well in the second half. First half, you weren't that strong. What happened in the second half? What did Coach Morey say at halftime to get you guys fired up? Well, he just said that we had to play better coming out of the back and basically had to go to it and just be tougher all around because we knew Seton Hall was coming at us, and we had to come at them equally as hard and uh, take more chances on goal. So he got us real fired up. You know, he, he gave us a talk. Okay, Todd, you had to mark uh, the tournament's most outstanding player, Ian, Ian Hennessy. What's it like to mark Ian? Well, he's a great player. He's, you know, he's much bigger than I am, and... He used his body exceptionally well. He's good turning with it on the, on the first touch. So I um, came up on him real hard and strong. So I was trying to deny him the ball and not let him turn. So that was my whole game plan, just to deny the ball from him. Basically, go hard. You did very well. Outstanding. Most outstanding player in the tournament. Uh, back to you, Scott. Okay, thank you very much, Gary. Thank you very much, Todd D'Alessandro, the defensive star of the tournament. And the final score once again from the Connecticut Soccer Stadium in the championship game of the Big East Soccer Tournament, Seton Hall 2, UConn 1. And the Seton Hall Pirates are once again the Big East Soccer Champions, the 1987 Big East Soccer Champions. Today's game has been brought to you by Bush Beer, the beer with the taste as smooth as its name, Bush. Nesson's coverage of New England college soccer closes out its season with the 1987 New England Collegiate All-Star Game from Worcester Polytechnic Institute in Worcester on Sunday, November 22nd. Same day coverage begins Sunday evening at 8.30 p.m. Make sure to check your Nesson listings for other broadcast times. That's the news. Uno cosenza zero. Nella Serie C inserita nella schedina del totocalcio italiano, Monopoli 1, Campobasso 0, Cecina e Provercelli 0 a 0. L'incontro è diretto dall'arbitro Fabio Baldas di Trieste con la collaborazione dei guardaline Padovan e Tarantola. Oltre 50.000 spettatori, il massimo dell'attuale capienza dello stadio olimpico, 1 miliardo e 300 milioni di incasso. Nel secondo tempo la Roma è in maglia rossa gioca alla destra dei vostri schermi e sta per battere il calcio d'inizio in panchina la Roma ha ancora portato a disposizione di Nils Lidom il secondo portiere Peruzzi 
Di Mauro, Gerolin, Ferrario e Rezzitelli. Dino Zoff che ha rinunciato a Laudrup per inserire Barros. Ha portato in panchina lo stesso Laudrup con il numero 15. Poi abbiamo il secondo portiere Bodini, Brio e Magrin. Vediamo Collovati che recupera questo pallone. Lancio in profondità è troppo lungo. Cabrini controlla la sua zona in anticipo su Massaro. Quindi serve Mauro verso Marocchi. Ecco l'ex bolognese. Tricella, poi il gioco viene cambiato verso Galia. Barros. Ancora Marocchi un disimpegno verso il portiere Tacconi, bravo in un paio di interventi del primo tempo, soprattutto uno su un tiro da distanza ravvicinata di Desideri, ha messo in evidenza le qualità di Stefano Tacconi. La rimessa in gioco di Policano, Manfredoni annela, fermato Desideri che perde il tackle nei confronti di Tricella che rilancia subito Zavarov sul settore sinistro Zavarov punta l'area di rigore viene fermato ancora da Manfredonia Manfredonia ha giocato una grande partita peccato quella ammonizione però che ne macchia un po' il rendimento viene lanciato adesso Feller possibilità quasi di un contropiede romanista con la difesa leggermente sbilanciata Feller cerca lo spazio per il tiro non riesce a trovarlo neanche il passaggio serve poi i desideri che fa venire in avanti Nela, pronta la conclusione fuori di Nela. Tiro di Nela dopo un minuto e 50 secondi, il punteggio nel secondo tempo è sempre Juventus 1, Roma 0. Inquadrato Stefano Tacconi. Salta Manfredonia, anticipo di Collovati, quindi Nela, intercettato il pallone che Nela voleva dirigere verso Policano da Mauro, quindi Buso alle prese con Oddi, Oddi viene attaccato forse in maniera troppo irruenta da Buso, comunque l'arbitro fa proseguire anche per la regola del vantaggio, palla rimasta in possesso della Roma che manovra con Nela anticipato ancora da Galia Policano va via Barros superando un tentativo di desideri ma non quello di Manfredonia che lo ferma implacabilmente Giannini fallo di Galia su Giannini Manfredonia ha toccato ancora Giannini il pallone di ritorno Tempestilli sbaglia la girata Mauro palla che schizza nella zona di Massaro Giannini cercava la triangolazione Massaro Giannini ha recuperato il pallone ma ha ritardato la prosecuzione dell'azione stessa che ora viene affidata a Nela quindi si inserisce Collovati Mas eh, Policano verso Feller sul quale c'è Bruno che controlla a sua volta implacabilmente Feller Bruno gioca su Feller Favero su Giannini Galia su Policano e Cabrini su Massaro la Roma invece gioca a zona con Tempestilli a destra che ora viene preceduto da Marocchi ma in seconda battuta interviene eh, Oddi che insieme a Collovati gioca come difensore centrale sulla sinistra c'è Nela avanza Massaro Giannini possibilità di triangolazione fra Giannini e Massaro che infatti viene effettuata ancora doppio scambio fra i due Massaro non riesce però ad andare via per l'intervento del suo avversario diretto che è Antonio Cabrini e c'è un calcio di punizione per il fallo di Cabrini su Massaro Batte Giannini il calcio di punizione, si porta in avanti anche Tempestilli insieme a Collovati, Policano, Feller e Nela ai limiti dell'area di rigore, ecco la punizione, al Feller gira al volo e la palla però è controllata facilmente dal portiere Tacconi.
il tiro di Feller in mezzo rovesciato dopo 4 minuti e 50 secondi sul rinvio di Tacconi però Massaro riconquista la palla la fa carambolare sugli avversari e guadagna il primo calcio d'angolo del secondo tempo che è il quarto a 0 in favore della Roma va a battere l'angolo Policano gira Desideri di testa ancora Desideri ribattuto due volte il suo tentativo di tiro nella follatissima area di rigore della Juventus poi la squadra bianconera si distende in avanti appoggiando sul portoghese Rui Barros Zavarov Mauro Galia Mauro ancora Collovati controlla Galia rimessa in gioco con un calcio di punizione per il fallo di Galia su Manfredonia quindi Giannini scatto in avanti di Tempestilli Massaro Massaro supera due avversari serve ancora Tempestilli parte altissimo il cross un colpo di testa di Galia arriva Giannini controlla bene la palla non la serve altrettanto bene per Desideri la palla respinta da Favero finisce in fallo laterale rimessa in gioco di Giannini per Nela Policano di testa per Desideri Desideri cerca lo spazio per il tiro conclusione forte ma centrale parata dal portiere Tanco, Tacconi ancora Desideri il più pericoloso nel tiro in rete anzi diciamo quello che finora per due volte è riuscito a cogliere lo specchio della porta con tiri piuttosto forti entrambi di sinistro ma entrambi ben controllati dall'ottimo Tacconi 7 minuti e 12 secondi nella ripresa con la Juventus sempre in vantaggio per 1-0 Zavarov Galia esce Tancredi su Barros che era stato lanciato ancora molto bene in velocità tempestiva questa volta l'uscita di Tancredi al limite della propria area di rigore Nela Feller fa guadagnare alla sua squadra una rimessa laterale ancora verso Feller il cross al centro per Massaro ancora grande parata di Tacconi sul tiro di Massaro con deviazione in calcio d'angolo Roma un passo dal pareggio gran tiro di Massaro che sembrava botta sicura rivediamo Feller che riesce a servire arriva Massaro controlla e Tacconi può parare poi Bruno completa il salvataggio deviando in calcio d'angolo il quinto calcio d'angolo in favore della Roma lo batte Policano colpo di testa tentato da Massaro anticipato ancora dall'uscita tempestiva di Tacconi bravissimo nel evitare per due volte almeno in maniera decisiva con i suoi interventi il pareggio della Roma salta Oddi arriva Galia discesa di Zavarov in spazi un po' troppo liberi Tempestini lo ferma ecco Desideri Policano a Genova Atalanta in vantaggio sulla Sampdoria con un gol di Eva Ir Sampdoria 0 Atalanta 1 ha segnato Eva Ir ha rimesso il gioco romanista avanza ancora la Roma Giannini servito da Tempestilli ha ribattuto un tentativo di traversone di Giannini Barros ancora verso Barros che fa schizzare la palla nella zona di Marocchi cross di Marocchi controlla Tempestilli quindi Manfredonia che ancora completa il rinvio fuori area attende Massaro che serve in profondità per Rudi Feller il tedesco aspetta che arrivi qualche compagno prima di completare l'azione entra in area di rigore ma lui stesso al tiro cerca la conclusione rasoterra sul primo palo controlla bene Tacconi 
con il pallone fuori bersaglio 9 minuti e 55 secondi della ripresa con la Juventus sempre in vantaggio per una rete a zero sulla Roma con un gol di Alto Belli al dodicesimo intanto a Como il Pisa ha pareggiato con Cuoghi Como 1, Pisa 1 ha pareggiato Cuoghi per il Pisa avanza ancora la Roma cerca di andare al cross Tempestilli palla che viene fermata in fallo laterale traversone verso Massaro Galia di testa mette fuori aria attende lì Rui Barros Marocchi Barros Galia Cabrini all'indietro Favero verso Zavarov in pratica gioca quasi all'ala sinistra Zavarov anticipo da parte di Manfredonia a Cremona ha pareggiato l'Avellino con una punizione di Marulla deviata Cremonese e Avellino 1 a 1 ha raddoppiato il Messina con un gol di Mandelli quindi il Messina conduce per 2 a 0 sul Bari poi terzo gol di Pierleoni attualmente dunque Messina 3 Bari 0 Messina 3 Bari 0 mentre il Monza ha segnato il terzo gol e conduce per 3 a 1 su Licata Monza 3 Licata 1 dodicesimo minuto della ripresa Juventus in vantaggio sulla Roma per 1 0 all'Olimpico Roma che sta attaccando Tacconi bravissimo in due occasioni ha salvato il risultato per la Juventus avanza Nela mette un cross in aria salta Feller raccoglie Massaro rovesciata ancora di Giannini messa fuori area riprende però Manfredonia Nela Man, eh, Collovati Tempestilli Manfredonia ancora un intervento dell'arbitro Baldas che segna un calcio di punizione alla Roma intanto a Firenze la Fiorentina ha raddoppiato e conduce per 2 a 0 sulla Lazio Il gol della Fiorentina è stato segnato da Mattei. Vediamo Giannini che sta per battere la punizione. Dietro c'è Desideri, è un destro, quella è la posizione per i destri e Desideri potrebbe tentare il tiro violento. Vediamo Giannini, Desideri sulla barriera si infrange sulla barriera il tiro di Desideri intanto l'Ascoli ha segnato il terzo gol Ascoli 3 Verona 0 Collovati Oddi per Giannini Giannini entra in area di rigore cerca lo spunto per offrire un pallone ai compagni fuori riprende ancora Massaro pallonetto alto di un soffio ancora tentato Massaro dopo aver cercato prima la soluzione di forza con un tiro violento questa volta ha cercato quella di astuzia con un pallonetto rivediamo l'intelligente pallonetto di Massaro con Tacconi che stava per essere scavalcato anche se vede era prontissimo anche in questa circostanza dubbiamente Tacconi per ora merita il titolo di migliore in campo colpo di testa di Manfredonia Policano ha la palla sul destro che non è il suo piede migliore in effetti ne viene fuori un tiro non fra i migliori proprio per la difficoltà di Policano di essere disinvolto quando deve calciare di destro 
Tacconi e Manfredonia indubbiamente i migliori in campo finora nei due campi il rinvio di Tacconi Tempestilli guadagna una punizione per un fallo che subisce da Zavarov battuta la punizione ecco Lionello Manfredonia ancora un fallo questa volta di Favero su Giannini sulla tre quarti un altro calcio di punizione in favore della Roma Giannini Manfredonia Giannini ancora verso Nela che è scavalcato dall'apertura troppo laterale un rinvio sbagliato consente alla Roma di ricoverare subito a centrocampo palla controllata da Massaro dopo un tentativo di traversione di Tempestilli ed ancora Tempestilli che serve nuovamente Nela Policano Policano si libera della palla servendo Manfredonia chiamato in avanti quindi Nela va al traversone per cambiare il gioco verso Massaro ancora cerca Manfredonia di ritardare l'azione degli Juventini si scontra con un avversario che nella circostanza è Zavarov e c'è il calcio di punizione in favore della Juventus nella sua tre quarti. Marocchi Mauro. Ancora uno spunto di Rui Barros con Collovati, lo ha fermato in fallo laterale. La rimessa in gioco è di Galia verso lo stesso Barros. Galia. Manfredonia tocca all'indietro per Tancredi anticipando Barros che era stato servito in aria da un passaggio stretto di Zavarov. Massaro sul quale c'è Cabrini che ha giocato molto bene impedendo a Massaro delle sgoprate anche se... Massaro è riuscito ugualmente ad essere pericoloso almeno un paio di volte e in una circostanza è stato bravissimo Tacconi a impedire all'ex milanista il gol c'è un fallo su Policano c'è un calcio di punizione in favore della Roma Giannini Massaro poi Tempestilli Manfredonia si libera di un paio di avversari, cerca di andare al... Era, era Tempestilli, viene fermato in fallo laterale. Giannini, Tempestilli, un cross contro...